How's it going guys? Welcome back to my channel here. Thank you guys for tuning in. It has been a hot minute since I've been working on any of my projects here. So today I'm going to be starting to pull the engine on the MR2. I haven't started doing anything just yet, but I'm going to start, you know, pull the battery, drain the fluids, things like that. And if you guys have been following my Instagram, you guys have noticed I did get the front bumper of the Talon painted. There are still some dents and things that I need to take care of across the vehicle. You know, some dents over here. But the front bumper is now all one color. And for, for the fender repairs, I do have new fenders to be able to put on the vehicle and a new headlight lid because the left side or the passenger side one uh, is kind of bent like right around here. But that I do have, I just need to get them painted, put on ready to go and let's just kind of dive into um, getting this engine pulled because I have a lot to do to get everything going here. Since the last time you guys saw the vehicle I did get everything pulled back into shape with the new fender put on. It does just need to be painted to match the vehicle. Debating on painting or wrapping but everything's pulled all back into shape. I do have another one of these coming which I am supposed to be meeting a gentleman. Thank you again Paul. To be able to get that doll done and get started on everything else but vehicle is drivable and you're gonna, you guys are going to see a lot of different upgrades I have going into the vehicle, which I'm really excited for. Time to get started with pulling the battery out. This bracket is pretty rusty, so I'm going to also try to get that powder coated as well while I have everything out. I mean, this bracket is pretty freaking rusty, so hopefully I'll get to be able to powder coat that and make it look brand new again. All right, got the battery nicely out. I'll probably hook up the battery charger to it and get going on that. Again, big shout out to Paul for getting me this part here that I needed for the lower front portion of the vehicle and this uh, fender liner here as well. But um, yeah, these a lot of you guys that are watching these videos, I greatly appreciate all the support and everything you guys are doing because uh, I wouldn't be able to do it with a lot of you guys, but uh, I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, I'm gonna start draining the fluids on here. This is the first time I've ever pulled the engine on an MR2. I've pulled the engine once on the Talon and uh, once on the Miata, so I kind of know how to pull an engine, of course, but uh, pulling it out of a mid-engine vehicle is a little bit more complicated, but uh, just bear with me as we go along here. But uh, I completely forgot to record it, so uh, oh well. If any of you know how to drain oil or do an oil change on a vehicle, which I'm assuming most of you do that are watching these videos, you know what it looked like. All right, aside from coolant needing to be drained, I can pretty much just start taking everything apart. Actually, what I'm first going to do is I'm going to take off this engine cover so it's not in the way. Alright, now personally I'm going to start with the shifter linkage. Uh, there's this bracket that attaches to the intake manifold here. Actually, what am I doing? 
I am not thinking straight. I don't even have to worry about the throttle linkage right now, or the throttle bracket, because I, this whole thing can come out with the engine. Wow, I'm smart. Genius, 10 out of 10. Now that my uh, brain is working and I've, you know, got a four head again instead of a three head, I can just loosen this. That is just for cruise control, which also does not work on this vehicle. Oh well. There we go. A lot simpler because this whole bracket just stays with the engine. I can drop it out with everything else. Now I'm getting my five head working. Right now I'm removing the mass airflow sensor, which is this big block here. There's a bolt there, bolt there, and a bolt there. There's this um, kind of bracket it sits on. I'm assuming once I do all that and remove these little couplers um, that hold everything together, it should just come right out, but I guess we're gonna find out here. Hi kids, do you like violence? Wanna see me stick nine inch nails through each one of my eyelids? Someone next door was actually just playing some shady, so. <laughs> All right, simple enough. Now just to figure out how to get this connector off. Oh, I guess I could have left that on there. Look, look me thinking with my three head again, not my four head. Oh, wow. There's a bunch of dirt down in this connector here. All right, and that is out. It looks like a... This thing is weird. It looks like a freaking like, animal of some sort. It's got a head over here and its tail. I'm weird, I don't know. Get this little thing out of the way. Oh, that one I wanted. All right, still coolant in this. This thing is uh, pretty disgusting. This is the coolant overflow bottle. I'm wondering if I can get like an aluminum one to replace it with, because uh, I don't think I should probably use that. And the coolant that's coming out of it is uh, pretty brown. Based on the look of things, it does look like I'm still gonna have to remove this bracket anyway, because the main engine harness runs all the way through and under this in between the intake manifold and the fuel rail. So uh, yeah, I'm still gonna have to remove it anyway. Oh well. My English teacher wanted to point me in junior high. Next, thanks a lot. Next semester, I'll be 35. I know probably some of y'all are gonna comment on the fact that I'm using Ryobi tools, but they get the job done for me. And I don't have money for anything else. Now I'm wondering to defeat that, how easy it would be to change the throttle linkage to be able to just run straight from the foot pedal rather than having that whole bracket with the cruise control stuff. It'd be a lot more responsive. Hmm, a lot of less pedal play too. All right, time to remove the speedometer cable. I'm just going through all the simple stuff right now just to make the job a little bit easier. Go from simple to hard stuff and then and then make my life a little bit more of a pain. Do the engine bay temp sensor connector. Oh yeah, that I need to make a permanent thing too. This is the freaking wire when I uh, fixed my radio issue, but I need to make that more of a permanent fixture in the vehicle. That's kind of simple. That's a nice place for a ground just to randomly be somewhere there. I didn't even know that was there. Okay, as for right now, I'm kind of just doing this as a vlog style video. If you guys want me to do this as more of a tutorial style video, definitely let me know because I don't mind doing that at all. But right now it's more of a vlog style video. All right, gonna unplug this cold start injector here and and I should be done with everything on the intake manifold that needs to be disconnected.
Well, that's interesting. The uh, cold start injector is wired in with number two cylinder injector. And wow, these injectors just kind of flop around in here. Wondering if I need to replace those O-rings. All right, time to get all this stuff for the distributor unplugged. Mm, come on. Why don't you guys super glue this thing in? This is the joys of working on 30 some odd year old vehicles. And a lot of this stuff wants to come apart. Right here, this little connector is your oil pressure switch for the dash gauge. I have had this unplugged twice and scared the heck out of myself twice thinking that I had no oil pressure because I forgot to plug it back in. Well, now I realize going in here, I can't really pull out this wiring harness without uh, pulling the fuel rail because it uh, runs literally right under the fuel rail and there's a bunch of pipes that run you know like to the cold start injector and uh, yeah but oh well i will get there slowly but surely now if any of y'all have ever done any of these injectors before you know they're kind of a pain not all injectors are like this but they have this little metal hook that goes around the clip which is a lot of how this mr2 works it has this little metal clip that goes around the connectors especially like the cold start injector here but you have to get your hook right in there and kind of fish it out and it's kind of a nightmare but once you get it it's a good feeling thankfully with these you only have to do one side and then you're good to go all right all the injector connectors are pulled now all i have to do is get the fuel rail undone and then this entire bulk of this harness that runs all the way through can get fished out where it's supposed to go. You can see here where a lot of the harness runs through there and a little bit back there which I'm going to have to figure out where that goes. Probably goes up to this uh, throttle position sensor and uh, everything f goes back through this little firewall which goes into the trunk which is where the ECM is. As I'm just going around knocking stuff up behind the camera and stuff I noticed like a lot of these hoses are split. I don't know if you can see that. This will focus. I mean, this car is uh, 1987 and it's 2023. So that means it is about 30 something years old. I mean, this car is 36 years old. So I can imagine since it only had about 119,000 miles on it when I got it, that everything on this is probably original. Um, I can imagine I'll need to replace pretty much every rubber hose. I've already needed to replace some of them. Some of these vacuum lines up here that have kind of gotten brittle and broken off. So um, I'm definitely just going to go ahead and replace everything. I do have some silicone hoses for the radiator and stuff are not necessarily for the radiator but all the ones that go in the engine bay here that go up to the radiator and it's going to be a nice upgrade i'm really excited to be able to slap those on there and get everything done properly all right a little stuff i'm going to do so i don't forget is number the injector connector so of course number one all the way at the front number two three And four. Now, of course, generally most people do this with masking tape, but of course I cannot find mine right now, so uh, send it. This I'm going to label CSI for a cold start injector. If you've never removed an engine before, especially an OE all original, nothing's been touched, it's all factory. Everything's kind of straightforward because, for example, the wiring harness here, everything has a very specific spot it goes. There's no real way to mix it up. 
So for example, right down over here, you have all these connectors and they're usually color coded. This isn't, but this just goes right on there. Very simple. There's another harness that goes back here, which I failed to notice and completely forgot about, which goes to the starter, which I need to get. Um, but down here, this harness runs right through the intake manifold, runs over to the coil, distributor, um, all of that stuff right back over there. Makes it very simple, easy to keep track of. They're all different connectors of all different sizes, so there's no way to mix them up either. All right, I had a little lunch break and then I decided to get a little bit of stuff done off camera. So went under and disconnected the starter. That was a little bit hard because this, um, this is the power wire to it. It is up against the block. So you kind of have to disconnect the starter or you have to remove the starter from the transmission before you can get that because there's no way you're getting a wrench in there. So two 14 millimeters out of the transmission, the, this specific starter had a 13 millimeter on the um, on this power wire here. Did that, disconnected them both, and now everything's fished up. So I got the starter all through there. Still have to remove the fuel rail, and that's what I'm going to conquer next. There we go. Fuel injectors out. get that fuel injector rail out of the way you can get that harness out of the way cleans up all of that room in there and uh, now I just have to remove this vacuum line for the brake booster and yeah this um, is coming along actually a heck of a lot quicker than I expected okay small rant here I've been draining my coolant here for about an hour and a half now and this thing was full there's nothing in there. There's so much coolant in the system. Of course, the heater core has some, but everything from the heater core goes all the way back to here where the thermostat housing is. Thermostat housing has a little bleed screw, but there's nothing in there. And you come up front to the radiator here. And I don't know if you can see down there, but it is dripping extremely slowly. And only that, and that has come out, and that's probably a gallon and a half, so I know there's quite a bit more left in the system somewhere. Of course, Toyota had to use hoses that come from all the way up here and go all the way up to the front of the vehicle. Logic. All right, I think the previous owner never did a coolant exchange because when I went to pull everything out of here, there was like all of this goo came out of the thermostat housing, which it literally looks like chocolate, which I guarantee it's not. At least I hope it wouldn't be, but um, that is absolutely disgusting. So I got to clean that out and still wait for the dang coolant to drain now two hours later. All right, to help speed this process along, I've been jacking up the vehicle all the way around, left, right, just to kind of move the coolant throughout the system. And now I have closer to about two gallons out. So uh, hopefully soon, um, or actually, you know, I may as well just say screw it and start pulling everything. Oh yeah, your coolant can look like this too if you don't change it for probably 10 years or more. Real tasty. Don't change your coolant for about 10 years and you too can look like me. ka -chow. All right, time to just start pulling stuff out because why not? All right, 
there we go. Heater hose is out of the way. And um, yeah, now I can start pulling this lower radiator hose and the other hose off of there. And then I just have to pull AC lines, uh, clutch lines, the exhaust system, and that should pretty much do it. Of course, obviously, other than motor mounts, it is almost there. The hardest thing I think is going to be the exhaust because everything is kind of rusted on because it is 36 years old. But we'll get it off one way or another. That's what she said. I think what I'm going to do while I have the engine out is kind of clean everything up because I don't like seeing all these random hard lines for vacuum lines everywhere. And a lot of the stuff I'm pretty sure I don't even need. Um, I really don't really even know what a lot of it is even for. So um, I'm going to do some research on what a lot of this is. And if I need it, I'll keep it, of course. But if I don't, I'm definitely getting rid of it like this. I don't even know what this is. This has two vacuum lines run into it. I have no clue what the heck it is. All right, so I just pulled the shifter linkage off down there and uh, the rubber bushings on there surprisingly look pretty well. I do have solid ones that I'm installing as well. And down here, there's a little shifter square. That's plastic. I'm gonna replace that with a metal machined one. And I also noticed whoever owned this before potentially did something with the engine transmission, had it apart, I'm not sure if they did, but it is missing the clutch uh, clutch fork boot. And I'm like, um, that's kind of needed if you drop something down there that's could cause some issues. But other than that, once I, uh, I got the heater hoses out of the way, I can pull the lower hose, that hose, I can, uh, drain the transmission fluid, remove the exhaust, and I'm pretty sure aside from pulling the axles, this thing's ready to come out. And the motor mounts. Alright, I'm going to end the video here. I've gotten quite a bit done. I do still need to pull the axles, uh, loosen up the motor mounts, drain the transmission fluid, and uh, actually I think that may be about it got all the coolant hoses off. Um, there is some AC lines I need to do and I just need to remove the shifter linkage from the brackets on the transmission and uh, just loosen up the, tr uh, the clutch slave cylinder hoses and that's pretty much it. I mean everything else is everything else is all out. So uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Please like, subscribe, and share. Please follow along because I have so much I'm going to be doing to this vehicle. And not only to this vehicle, but also to the Miata back there and the Talon up front there. So please follow along. I have so much coming in store and I hope you guys enjoy it. So thank you guys for watching. Peace out. And remember, don't quit on a body that won't quit.